This person says, my painting teacher uses a value scale of grays made of black and white to lower the intensity of colors. Yet you suggest using complementary colors to complementary colors to lower the intensity. Which is correct? Well, that's a little tricky, but I'll show you. I say it's a little tricky because I always hesitate uh, if I disagree with someone else's teacher on something I don't want to make light of someone else's method of teaching. So rather than say I'm correct or that your teacher is correct, I'm going to show you a comparison of what happens when you use a mixture of black and white as uh, varying degrees of gray to lower the intensity of color and what happens when you use the complement. I'll just show you the comparison and you can decide for yourself. Now one thing for sure is that when you're using complements you have a wider range. In other words you have all three characteristics of color working for you. So when, when we're uh, decreasing intensity that means we're decreasing saturation of color. Okay so we've got hue which is the color itself. And in this case, if uh, it's complementary colors, we have two, two hues. Uh, we've got value, which is the degree of values, dark and light, degree of dark and light. Both of them work very, very well for degrees of dark and light. And then we have intensity, of course, which is the saturation. And they really both work very well for reducing intensity. But, Whereas the, using the black and white combination to reduce intensity will reduce only the intensity. You, can re, you reduce the value by uh, how much black is in there and how much of a darker or whether the color, color is darker. But it's, if really the amount of black that's in there, the way you, you uh, make the values darker and then the amount of white that's in there to make it lighter, uh, that does combine somehow with the, with the paint you're using depending on what value it is. But you have a full range of values in both of them. You're able to get a full range of values when you use both methods. You're able to get a full range of intensity when you use both methods. You're not able, able to get the full possibility of hues. That's why I prefer the intent, using the complements uh, over using the black and white mixtures. Now, uh, I'm going to show you the comparison and let you see what I'm talking about. First of all, you see here on the color wheel, uh, and I always use the color wheel as the basis of how things work. I've decided to use orange and blue as the complements to show you uh, this comparison. The comparison will work with all combinations of complements, but we don't want to go through all of them. You can do that for yourself. I'll just show you how. So I've chosen to use orange and blue simply because blue is in a way the closest to black. So that will give you the closest comparison. All the others you're going to find out will give you a wider comparison. So let's remove the color wheel. Now the colors, the hues, uh, the, the tube colors I've chosen to use. For the blue I've chosen ultramarine blue. And for the orange I've chosen cadmium orange deep. Which means it's the cadmium orange leaning a little bit more towards red. But you'll see why in just a moment. Now, so we'll start with the black. Now what I'll do here, you see I've just got four values of each of these outlined here. And because these two values are closer to cadmium orange uh, as it comes out of the tube, I'll start there. So I'm going to start with the, I'll start with the black first and here's how I'll do that. I'm going to uh, make two sides. This side will be for the black and this side will be for the blue. All right, let's get a paper towel here and keep the palette knife clean. Now, so what I'll do is I first of all to show you that you remember you can get varying degrees of intensity uh, depending on the proportion of the fully saturated color to the color you're using to neutralize. So I'll start right here. And let's reach right over here now and let's pull in. I'll pull in a pretty good amount 
and let's just put it here for a comparison. Um, we need to get that just a little bit richer. This is just one possibility of a comparison. So now you have that uh, darker value of the cadmium orange reduced in intensity. Now I'm going to take it up. Uh, first of all, I'm going to take it up just, I'm just going to do two steps here maybe to, uh, I hope I can remember the sequence. So I'm going to do another step where I reduce the tint intensity only slightly. And that's this right here. All right, now before I go further, I'm going to do that same step with the ultramarine blue. And what I'm going to try to do is to reduce the intensity in the same degree. So I'll pull some ultramarine blue of the same value. See what I'm doing? This is a scientific experiment showing you a procedure that you can use to compare the two methods with whatever uh, two hue, uh, whatever tube colors you want to test out. All right, so now I'm going to go on this side that I designated for the blue, and we'll kind of watch to see the degree of the intensity here. And I'll just put this right here as a comparison. Now you can see, look at that, just a little bit more of the intensity in there. You can see that they are very close. Get just a little bit more of that uh, orange in there. There we go. So you see they're very, very close. They behave very much the same way uh, when I control the amount, the proportions like that. So I'm going to do the same thing now by adding just a little bit more of the red into there. So I'll get some more of the blue. Let's add a little bit more. Now I'm going to try to get the same intensity or similar intensity as I have here. Uh, with with the ultramarine blue, and that's it right there. Okay, very close. I don't quite have it on the button yet. Now, so you can see that so far they're very much the same. Here's where they're different. Rinse the brush really, really good to show you this. Now I'm going to I leaned it uh, I leaned this intensity a little bit more towards orange. You can continue to lean it towards orange, and you can varying degrees of neutralization of that saturation. That's intensity. That's what it's about uh, with both. But now I want to show you the lack of latitude in hue uh, when you're when you're leaning towards the cool color. Black is cool, and ultramarine blue is cool. In this and the uh, orange is warm. Now, you, when you're dealing with uh, complements, you're always dealing with a cool and a warm. All right, so here we go. This one I want to do. I'll go back to the black and I'll go back to the same mixture here of the black and white. And I'm going to just barely add a little neutralization. I'm going to warm it up just a just a tad. Let's get that just a little bit more paint. Warm it just a tad. And I'll, I'll just put that put this right here, right beside this one. Now, you can see I warmed it just a tad, and it begins to turn a little bit more gray. All right, let's see. Suppose, let's, let, let's warm it just a little bit more, but still not use the, not lose that uh, the quality there. And let's go this way with it. Not much difference there. Let's go just a little bit more. All right, now this time, rather uh, what I'd like to do, you see I've got that... A little bit warmer, not very much, a little bit warmer. Now I want to go to that uh, uh, a lighter value of that black and white and do the same thing. And I'm going to do that right here. You have to think about what you're doing. Now, here's the lighter value. Now I'm going to go up here. At just a touch of that. I just want to get it a little bit neutralized. Just a little bit neutralized. Not very much. And I'll put that right here. Right now I'm going to do an, another area here where I'm going to try to make it bluer. I'm going to try to make it grayer, in other words. In other words, what I'm doing now is I'm going for a what would be a bluer color if I were working in blue. So I'm just barely adding, because you see it's already neutralized. So I'm barely adding just a touch of that um, orange into it, and this is what I get right here. You see, it won't. It will just go grayer. 
And of course, let's do it just pure gray. And there's just the pure gray. Now, I want to do the same sort of thing with ultramarine blue. And you'll see, this is where you, this is what you don't get when you use uh, the black and white to neutralize. You, you don't get the latitude of hue on the cool side. So I'll show you what I'm talking about there. All right, so now, here's the blue. And we will get um, just barely neutral with the, with the blue. I'm going to end up having to make more of that, I think, barely neutral. All right, so now you will begin to, you begin to see a little bit more of that blue pop through. See this? You see the difference between this and this is you have that ability to pull the blue out of the color. So if you want a, a blue that is slightly neutral, uh, then, then you can have that latitude if you're working within that range of these two colors. Uh, let's do, um, let's add just a little bit more and then we can show you how that works too. Go right up in here. I'm just going to put it right in here now that I'm almost finished with this demonstration. Add just a little bit more. And okay, maybe not quite. Let's see, just more. So when you add just a little bit more where the warm takes over, you get very close to the same thing. Now we'll go to the lighter value and show you. Now go to the blue, uh, the lighter blue, and just a touch right here, the lighter blue. Now what I want here is just the lighter blue. Now say if I'm working with a sky and I'm working with these two colors, or even if I'm working with skin tones, uh, Caucasian skin tones I should say, and I'm working with these colors and I have uh, a, a warm that is uh, catching a blue reflection, I'm not going to be able to get that with the gray, but I can get it with the blue. And just add a little bit more. If I add a little bit more, I still have that blue leaning. still have it leaning towards blue. It will eventually, they'll eventually pretty much look the same because the two colors completely neutralize each other. And when they completely neutralize each other, there's hardly any difference, as you can see right here on the palette. Hardly any difference between, there we go, I mean, that actually went a little bit warmer. Let's just, let's be true to the experiment and keep it a little bit on the, more on the cool side, so that you can see. I'm going to get just as neutral as I can without it going warm. And you can see more, this is truer right here. All right, now you now you can see. So you can see, whoops, that was a little bit of a boo boo there. So you can see now these. Are, remember, I said the, the these two colors, the the blue, ultramarine blue, blue that that is in that range of either cobalt blue or ultramarine blue, is really the closest to what you're going to. Well, this is ivory black I'm using. Now the different blacks, of course, give some a little bit warmer, some a little bit cooler, but. Um, the the ultramarine blue, if you're using that, is the closest to the black of any colors on, uh, or any of the colors that come. Uh, let's let's put it this way: any of the more saturated colors uh, that come out of a tube, uh, as compared to the color wheel. But if you do the same experiment with green, you're going to find even a wider range of possibilities. Um, if you're doing it like with red and green or any one of the reds or greens, or yellow, yellow, green, and red, violet, those, you have even a wider range of possibilities um, where you can bring out the hue, especially of the cooler side. You can bring out the hue that you cannot bring out if you're working with that combinations of blacks and whites. So that's the main reason why I prefer the complementary colors for creating the neutrals as opposed to uh, mixtures of black and white. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week.
And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.